Hi guys, welcome to the Music b and I'm 315 and today we're going to be reacting to an album by a band called Fever Moon with their latest album called Keepers Park. Now, this drops on the 4th of November 22 alongside another project. So not only on November the 4th are we going to be getting Fever Moon Keepers Park, we'll also be getting The Long Chains of Love which will also be dropping on the exact same day. So Jay Holmes is the main core of Fever Moon. He's been writing and recording home demos for years after relocating to Tokyo from Rayleigh, North Carolina back in 2003. As 2022 rolled around, Jay once again found himself sitting on a giant collection of home demos that he wanted to bring to life. After putting together a core group of Nick Bello on the bass and Daryl Baker on drums, it quickly became clear that Fever Moon deserved to be a living, breathing band. After putting together their core group of Nick Bello on bass and Daryl Baker on drums, it quickly became apparent that they needed to become a living, breathing band and show off their music. They started in a series of Tokyo Live Clubs. So this is going to be a twin release, two albums released on the same day. Um, and this one's going to be the first one that we're going to listen to. And maybe in the future, we'll also listen to their other album, the uh, brother or sister album to this one. All of these albums will be available on Spotify, Bandcamp, everything else that you can imagine, as well as CD format from the record label. So do keep an eye out in the description below. It will have all the details that you'll need for that. Enough waffling. Let's get on with the reaction. And our first track is called You. Okay, kind of high end intro. It's going to kick in in the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, got a groove, got a groove. Okay, feels like the Wombats in its style, sort of um, indie rock. Cause I'm moving to New York, that kind of style. Right, I'm wondering what the vocals are going to do. Oh, wasn't expecting the gravel voice. Quite an interesting voice. Kind of an almost like moody kind of voice, like if Lana Del Rey ate some gravel. That's sort of acoustical instruments going on. Different sides of my ears, different instruments going on, being introduced, okay. Okay, got a similar second verse. Would be nice to have some variation on the second verse, maybe. Remember, your verse, second verse needs to be a mild difference, little difference, dropping something. Perhaps you could have dropped the guitars in this and just had the bass playing. Just gives it that difference. Oh, I like what the bass is doing there. Boo, boo, boo. Very kind of walking bass. I'm going to do this while my neck starts to hurt. I need too much head banging. It's very sort of energetic first track, okay? Showing what Fever Moon are about. If you're enjoying this, links down below to the album, when it releases, when it drops, November the 4th. Make sure to add it to your streaming service. Buy a CD if you really like it. Three verses. Okay, being very ambitious in keeping my attention here. Three verses of the same quality. Mm. 
feels like we could kind of do with a higher voice as well. But it's quite a low sounding voice. Maybe backing up, I don't know, bassist, a guitarist, could, uh, drummer or someone could join him. With like a higher octave. Something, something higher. We kind of need that to um, to accentuate and bring out the lower voice. Either that or the um, the main singer just overdubs their voice again, doubling up, especially on the chorus. If you double up vocals on the chorus, you get a big sound. It's nicely produced. I feel like if this was a record label, they might these might have been suggestions they would have maybe given to you guys. Oh, I'm liking this. This is a change. Like a funky guitar rhythm going on. Distorted guitar. It's nice. Okay. Long. And I'm, I'm not saying that because we live in a sort of attention span deficit culture. This is long to expect a lot from us. Um, you're expecting a lot from the list, so there isn't enough change. And I'm a King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard fan, so I'd really know a thing or two about long songs and enjoying them. Nice and fast and upbeat, though, for a first song and intro track, it's good. Next up is Ronnie Spector. Sounds like a pirate. Oh, fade in. Unique. Okay, I'm looking about five minutes of this one. Ronnie Spector. Nice name, Ronnie Spector. He sounds like um, a cockney geezer. Oh, Ronnie Spector. Okay, I'm I'm getting the artist, the the vocalist, lead singer's vocals a lot more clear here, and they sound nice. They're fitting well here. Very nice um, use of space in the background. The big sound, but the calm sound. Some serious stuff. Question about the album. Album title. It's called Keepers Park. Does it need an apostrophe before the S to show that it's the park belonging to the keeper? Or is it many keepers? If it's many keepers, belongs to many of them, you still need apostrophe after the S. Either that or it's the na surname of someone, like, I'm Johnny Keeper. But even then, even then it would need apostrophe, actually. <laughs> Mr. Keepers. Something to consider before you drop the album. Sorry, this is my British grammar coming out. Some serious business. This song is really nice. It's emotional. You can tell the lyrics mean something. I love it. Almost piratey sounding voice. Yeah. Again, I wonder what this singer would sound like if he went an octave up and shouted on the choruses. I reckon it would sound alright. If he can reach it. It yeah, it needs it needs a higher octave up. Okay, this is my favourite so far, Ronnie Spectre doing it. It's doing something to me. 
It is. See, he even says shipwreck. He's it's a pirate. It's better than you, better than me. And I'd hang just to cut you the slack on a midnight line. Again, I feel this could have been about four minutes long. And it would have been enough. So they're trimming the uh, fluff. And I mean this not in any negative form of criticism but as just a general listener if I was just listening to it in the background I, it would just like become background noise I think I'm forcing myself to listen to it and I feel like I need more when I am actually being attentive feel free to disagree as much as you want Listen, go and listen to my stuff. Tell me it's bad. We're all here to uh, review and criticize. That's fine. All right, next up is Rose. Rose is in Fawn or Rose is in Rose from the Dead. I want to tell you that it's been or a name. <laughs> this is funky. Very indie rock. Like razor light now. Okay, this is one of the shorter, shorter album versions. Short, what am I saying? Shorter songs on the album. Go away, rectangle, rectangle of focus. You know, I'm a sucker for an acoustic guitar solo. Actually, that's an electric guitar. <laughs> what am I in about? I sound like a Chili Peppers solo. I think you can hear so many influences coming in here. I would say, I think the vocalist needs to be louder in all of these mixes uh, remember even though you're a band the vocalist is the star of the show to the listener vocalist and drums they they're like your meat potatoes is everything else unfortunately sorry bassist i know your job's important Like in that single note. Sorry for hurting your ears then, if that did hurt your ears. Nice solo. See, this feels like more of the perfect length right now. It's, um... Yeah, it's getting there. There's a reason why majority of industry standards are around three three minutes. Um, seems like we're moving to two and a half these days with our attention spans, but that was perfect. Got to keep them like uh, wanting more. But actually, humans, we don't know what we want. And when we, when we get more song, turns out we never wanted it in the first place. Nice. Nice relaxing ending. Okay. Next up is Telepathic Seizure. A telepathic seizure of our time. Nobody's dealing out Ooh. the truth. I wasn't expecting the drums to come in there.
So he hats off to the drummer. There's some like really nice snare work, just like there's little extra snares at times or tiny fills, just keeping the song flowing. In fact, bassist and drummer are like in harmony. They're like this. They're like cheese and mash. I hate cheese and mash. They're like bread and butter. Already with the solo, it's not even a minute in. Come on, guys. Give us a chance. My favourite still Ronnie Spector. Second would be Rose. Tell Pappy, see, Drew isn't bringing too much different to the table now. I'm starting to understand who Fever Moon are. Ah, now that's different. Remember, full strummed chords have been heard for many, many, many years since the Beatles and even earlier. Consider being more staccato with your riffs. So everyone's heard like your D's, C's, and G's for many years in the strumming pattern. Also, don't forget the power of palm muting. I have a quite a version purse. Uh, have a quieter section and a louder section. I feel at the moment the first four songs have been kind of the same level throughout dynamically. Don't forget there's quite a quiet sections can make the, the uh, choruses have such a bigger impact. The power of pausing, the power of silence. For example just before this solo came in you could have Pause for a bar, the drummer could have stopped for a bar, kicked in, and then that would have just let that solo have that much more impact. So I say as a band, start to consider small creative techniques. As a band, when you jam together, those are the small nuances that you might forget about as you're grooving away. When you're playing it, you feel that groove a lot more, yeah. But um as a listener, you don't feel that. You don't feel the sticks in your hands or you don't feel the vibrations other than in your ear. So having things that will prick those ears up, that ear candy, so important. But right here, you've got the lower and higher vocals and it sounds so much better. That could have come, that could have been done a few times. I call it the Ed Sheeran technique because he does it all the time. A lower vocal and a higher vocal. Again, four minutes forty-two of the same kind of wall of sound is a lot. Is a lot. Maybe try leaning more into the gravel voice as well. Get it even more like paralyzed. You know, just really go for it. Yeah, that sort of uh, emo punk kind of vibe from that from that uh, that voice, that tone. Oh, next up, four minutes forty nine. It's giving up the beast. Got a lot of long songs. I say, I hope the other project is more dynamically different than this one. If it's a lot of the same, you you know, that's like twenty two songs of similar sounds. Okay. Okay. Where did Feeder come from? Hello, Feeder. Oh, now I don't know where I'm at with this band. Okay. This is a change. This is a welcome change. It's very different to anything I've heard so far. So 
So I like that, you've got quite a section here. See, that's good, because you've got the quiet with the loud. That punch is harder then. See this? This is a chorus. It's hard to know with the same vocal range. We need doubling up. We need something else. Left and right vocals. And it's always a good technique for um, for a chorus. Could have just like a brick. Just something higher. It's kind of, kind of, it's that kind of upbeat tempo. I would have palm muted here. Just change the verses. Two different verses, always good. You kind of say you have your verse one, and then your verse one point five. And then maybe you 1.75. Basically, every verse is slightly different. Imagine like um, a game update. You've still got the same game each time, but it's slightly different. So this is long. I think this song should have ended by now. Again, catchy, catchy. Really upbeat, but it's the same wall of sound kind of throughout now. Vlogging a dead horse. I think sometimes when you're grooving as a band, having a jam, this is like, yeah, let's keep going. Doesn't need to be that long. So it looks like I'm taking victory sips whenever I make a, a suggestion. <laughs> Sorry. Solo felt kind of out of time then. I don't know if that's a deliberate choice. Drummer could have stopped here. Just the hi-hat maybe. Just, you know, some slightly different things. Bring a song to life. This one has the most um, memorable chorus to me, I think. Oh. That was surprising. I don't know if that was a welcome change. I felt that felt very unwelcome in a way. It's like, oh, here's the band. Oh, by the way, bye band. Bye band. I'm just going to do my... Slow guitar thing here. I think those techniques, uh, that technique of the fade out there was just too obvious that it didn't feel natural, whereas all the guitars, drums, everything felt so natural. It would have worked more, you know, in an electronic piece maybe, um, because you're expecting those kind of produced glitchy things. But the fade out that quickly was, yeah. I could see what you're going for. Not executed correctly, I think, in my opinion. Okay, this is called Corpus Chris. If you pardon the pun. Cute intro, I can hear waves, I think. A picture this. Can you picture this old terrace, old man alive? And Corpus Chris. Filled with sin and expertise advice. Mm, it's nice. Midnight, I hear you call Ooh. Got a kind of flanged Nirvana esque flange going on there. Again and again, lovers are. 
considered maybe picking this instead of strumming. I've heard a lot of strumming so far. Here is just um, dun, 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 throughout, really. It needs to be different, and this is a very emotional song. I think pick, picking could have worked. Oh, oh, I like that. Okay. Oh, that's good. That's a good, nice way to introduce the band there. That's how a lot of thought went into that kind of introduction. So there we go. We've got verse one, verse two, different. So you get a midnight, those highs. Just to really clarify that that's a chorus in its own right. It's, it's its own pocket. You can tell that I'm I'm looking at this from a production point of view more than a band point of view. You want to go from band that plays clubs and bars to band that does venues. You have to show this is these projects this is your portfolio this is your CV and you want to go from sounding like a, a band you'd have a great time listening to when you're drunk in a, in, in a bar to a band that you go and see live at a venue maybe I just have one drink you know So, as this is like portfolio, this is like your band's CV in a way, curriculum vitae CV, um, consider these production details, nuances, because they will elevate your track, they will make you think more as a band about how to approach certain things, uh, suggest things, take them out put them back in add things when you oh I like this when you're producing that's your chance to add all the glitz and glamour and all the bells and whistles everything like that I like that dun, dun, bum, bum, bum. that was interesting kind of wanted to carry on with the whole band Think about how much you could get away with not strumming as well. Sorry, I have a real thing with uh, strumming guitars. It harks all the way back to Wonderwall. You know, just that strumming sound is just so used. So overused by now. Strumming has its place. Do not get me wrong. Okay, this is more natural kind of fade out. Yeah, compared to Giving Up the Beast, which didn't have an as natural fade out. This is called Whistle Talk. I hear your whistle talk. What's Just a whistle like talk? See, the vocals seen the most at the forefront in this track compared to the other tracks. What? Okay, okay. I like that. Interesting stylistic choice. That's, that's what I'm talking about. More of those. I would have done the more staccato guitar as well, like a just make it like jabbing. I feel like we're missing a lot of the jabs thanks to the strummed guitars. It's just like softening that punch.
I like the synth as well. Nice to hear some different stuff going on, some different instrumentation, yeah. Like that, that's more jabby. That works better. Yeah. That's a groove. Well, I like that. We're building something. It's going higher, it's going higher. Okay, this is the most creative um, song I think we've had so far. Ooh, we got like the uh, elevator uh, piano, live lounge piano. See that would that high bit was nice. Yeah, doubling the vocals with the octaves. Okay, whistle talks my favourite. Then it's Ronnie Spector. Yeah, this is so so memorable. See that is that's like a song you hear while you know picking out some clothes in a clothes shop. And you come out of the shop singing it to yourself. Whistle talk is the single. I mean, we've still got four more songs left, but that seems like the single to me. That's the single. Okay, this song is called Seance Tonight. Nice, um... Some vocal samples. Definitely getting a bit more creative here. Whistle talk and seance. Two minutes 14. I've got a feeling this is like an interlude. Is this um, is the bassist singing? Need him involved a lot more. Adds to that group feel like uh, you're working well together, you all get along with each other. That's that's what I'm talking about. Okay, whistle talk and seance tonight. Really catchy kind of vocal stabs. Gonna remember those. Seance tonight. Hey lad, there's a seance tonight. You want to come join me at the seance? Sorry, that's my uh, northern British mine working dad. Going to a seance. Shut up. Uh, this is called Keeper's Park. This is the title track. When you're a title track, you got you know the weight of the world on your shoulders. You've got to you got to sh do some stuff. Ooh, okay. It's the most bassy guitar I've heard so far in the album. And part muting. I mentioned that earlier. Foreshadowing. Nice. 
Nice. Nice dynamic range here. Still a lot of strumming. This is a, a strummer's park, I'd say. I question who, who does it live. Who's got the acoustic? Who's got the electric? Because there's a bassist too. By the way, I have no problem with acoustic stuff being used with electric songs. I've released some of my own stuff that is like electric guitar with acoustic guitar. Works well at times, it's done right. Not that mine is done right at all. <laughs> It can feel like the kind of aggression when he shot a keeper's part. That was good. I swear I just heard card horns. Interesting. I like the messiness of this. minute title track there better be like a a very very different section here to keep the interest going because I'm feeling like we're towards the end at the moment and this is like your middle eight right here so where are we going with this Of a Spanish kind of guitar sound there. Like in the karma section here. I feel this album could have done without on um, I mean overall could have done without the acoustic guitar it's a bit of an unusual feeling to just have an electric in one ear and just an acoustic in the other ear. it's kind of like you've got the harsh and the nice maybe though sorry sorry maybe if they were blended together better would have worked perhaps two electric guitars at times two acoustics one in each ear Hand slightly to the left, slightly to the right, instead of hard left, hard right. Okay, this is a uh, quite a long sort of middle eight, middle sixty-four. That was nice. I think we waited a long time to get there. Hmm. That's a bit out of, out of tune there, that, that bend up. Didn't go high up enough, I don't think. I like the, the solo style, though. The solo style is very kind of almost messy. Almost like it's... I don't know. It sounds deliberately sloppy in a way, and that's a good thing. Obviously, thought has gone into it, but... Let 
Really nice, really nice solo. Okay. For a six minute epic like this, it has generally held my attention. I think it could have gone down to like four minutes. Ooh. Again, unusual fade out, too quick. Should have been a lot slower. Okay, this is our last track. It's called Midnight on the Mountain. But after this track, there is also, I think, a Japanese version of this song as well. So I'll give it a listen. Um, I'll cut out my, re my reaction to it if it is highly similar. Or I'll keep it in if I think there's enough different about it. It's only two and a half minutes. Almost very, very pop punk kind of drum. Fast. Neck vibrations. Oh. Hurting my neck. say um i like the album artwork i haven't said i mentioned that yet um you've kind of got the yin yang like symbol there the ode to like the the japanese um roots not roots i'd say but you know where the lead singer has gone i like the oranginess of it i like the way there's a moon and a sea it looks like and the city below that's yeah, good really good artwork I'm interested to see what um, the other album looks like, whether the artwork's similar with different colours. That would be quite cool. I like Midnight in the Mountain. Hmm. Fast and to the point. Feels like a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater song you know, in, some, in some aspects of it. Okay. What a way to finish the album that quickly. Um, I potentially would have ended it with Keeper's Park. That seems like your big one. Okay, this is the Japanese version of Midnight in the Mountain. Same song. I want to know what's different. Hmm. Sounds the same to me at the moment. Perhaps more like demo-ish? <laughs> Very different. Oh, I like the singer. Cool. <laughs> I love it. I love it, I love it, love it. She's got a great punk voice. <laughs> we need we need her in this more. I really like it. And um she provides that higher end to the low the low voice. Be your king 
what a nice sort of um, celebration at the end. Well, I'm not cutting this out. <laughs> I think, yeah, everyone needs to hear this. It's, it's a good track. <laughs> I'm going to get out my notebook, which is here. Um, and I'm going to start reviewing this album using my famous review method that no one cares about. Uh, the first aspect of my review is the flow. I'm going to give the flow of the album a 6 out of 10. I felt, on the whole, the majority of the album stuck to a similar style. Um, and it was nice to hear that similar style. But to its detriment as well, I think things could have been different at times. Uh, when it got to about fourth track in, Telepathic Seizure, or maybe it was Giving Up the Beast, then when things did kind of change in style, it was too drastic of a change. Um, so I feel like that could have been a bit better in terms of the flow. Uh, perhaps teasing drops of the other styles that have been going on um, throughout, or maybe just reconsidering the track order so that... It it makes sense. I'd also say as well, some of the fluff could have been cut out of some of the longer cuts on the album. Um, they were leaving me a, maybe a bit bored hearing the same repetitive kind of sounds, that same dynamic sound. So yeah, do consider for the future Fever Moon uh, how you present your work and how you get those ears listening. Lyrics, I'm going to give an 8 out of 10. I really like the lyrics and the lyrical theme and everything I listened to sounded interesting and a lot of it was either it sounded very fun or it was something from the heart, like in Corpus Chris, sounded very to the heart. So yeah, an 8 out of 10 for that. Artwork, I'm going to give a 10 out of 10. Whoever did the artwork should be given 100 thumbs up because it's really nice artwork. I'm very jealous of the artwork. I wish I had someone to make artwork for me like that. It looks really good. Production, production, I'm going to give maybe a 6 out of 10. Um, again, I felt the production, the producers maybe didn't do enough to kind of show off Fever Moon. Uh, I don't know how much of a say the band had in creating this project, but the suggestions that could have come from the producing desk or wherever the studio they went to, the they could have maybe suggested some ideas for the band. Uh, it felt very much like the band recorded it, asked to put in things, but the producers didn't maybe give their own ideas which you know isn't their job to do all the time is it but um to give ideas i think sometimes helpful tips are useful from a production standpoint and actually getting producers to listen to your demos and give their opinions on it um, and ask them what they'd like to do with that track to make it uh, to bring it into the public eye, then that can make things a lot better because there is a difference between being a band and jamming and coming up with great songs and presenting it as a full final version. And there's many things you can do in that sort of late stage of production um, that can make it better. I also wasn't too happy with the fade out choices. I think they were too drastic and too quick at times. Not all the time. There's one times where the fade out and fade in was nice, but I just felt it was just like a sudden drop and it didn't feel very natural. Singing. Singing on this, I'm going to give a 6 out of 10 as well. I feel like the uh, singing could have had more opportunities to double. The singer, I feel like the singer could have had more opportunities to double up the vocals, uh, to embellish vocals even work on maybe harmonies and things like that um i feel like the i feel like the um singing could have been doubled up at times to make it very clear when there's a verse and when there's a chorus um because it was dynamically the same usually you have a lower octave and higher octave for the chorus so so you can kind of hear um hear the difference especially from pitch so yeah overall if i had to give an overall rating to this album i think i would give it a six out of ten myself i think there is a lot there and a lot of interesting source material that just needs to be presented perhaps in the right way at times there are definitely great cuts on this album to which i will direct people towards if they somehow just skip to the end to hear my ending ronnie specter whistle talk uh, seance tonight keepers park and Midnight on the Mountain, the Japanese version, were all absolute highlights for me, uh, and it was a treat. I, I'm interested to hear 
the other album which also drops on November the 4th. All the links are down below. Make sure that you do comment on what was your favorite on this video. Tell the band what you enjoyed about their music. The more people are engaging with music and talking about music, the more people will also listen to yours. So return the favor by listening to someone else's music as well. Okay, goodbye, I guess. Oh my word. Gracious me.